Wyoming Snake River Watershed is the largest area in the United States still dominated by the native cutthroat trout. No other watershed even comes close. People from around the world come out to fish here. The popularity of the cutthroat is due in large part to its willingness to take a dry fly, even during the brightest parts of the day. Dry flies are the easiest and most fun way to fly fish, and so almost everyone in this area fishes that way. But people don't come out here just to fish. Other recreational activities are popular such as hiking, hunting, horseback riding, camping, floating, and sightseeing. By mid-July, the streams will have come out of runoff and begin offering good fishing through August and September. By October, the nights drop below freezing and the afternoons get shorter and cooler, but the fish are still catchable. Besides lots of fish, this area also has lots of wildlife. Some of it is harmless. Some you need to be careful of. I encountered a couple grizzly bears once. I yelled at them and they ran away. Not everyone has as powerful and intimidating a voice as I do, so you are encouraged to always carry bear spray. Moose can be aggressive and have been known to attack people. I encountered this moose on a trail. I stared it down and it finally moved out of the way and let me pass. Not everyone has as intimidating a stare as I have, so be careful out there. Porcupines are only dangerous if you try to pet them. Please refrain from doing so. Normally the air is crystal clear out here, but there were times when a thick haze affected visibility. This was due to wildfires in nearby states blowing smoke into the area. Despite that, the scenery throughout the Snake River watershed is outstanding. Most of the streams flow through national parks or national forest land. It will take many years for a person to fish all of the available water out here. I am sure it would be fun to try. There are huge numbers of fish out here and most anglers enjoy good success. Despite what may seem like a limitless supply of fish, it is imperative anglers practice catch and release to ensure a fabulous fishery for the future. During the past couple decades, it's become fashionable to try to refrain from removing fish slime when releasing fish. However, according to scientific studies, the incidental removal of slime during the catch and release process is not a significant factor in fish mortality. The main factor in mortality is exhaustion. To reduce fish exhaustion, I recommend using at least 5 pound line for the smaller streams and no less than 6 pound line for the larger streams. Make sure your fly hooks can handle the strain. A second main cause of fish mortality is oxygen deprivation. So try to get the fish back in the water as soon as possible. Usually when I hold the fish in front of the camera, I slow down the film. So what may look like 5 seconds is in fact only 2 seconds. Temperature also plays a critical role in fish mortality. If the water is over 70 degrees, it would probably be best to stop fishing. I check the water temperature throughout the day, and even during an unusually warm August, I never saw the temperatures exceed 70 degrees, but I did see it reach into the upper 60s on several occasions. When that happens, just be sure to hold the fish in the water a while longer, and make sure the fish is fully recuperated before letting it go. If you would like to learn more, I highly recommend the DVD, Trout Streams of the Tetons. This gives valuable information on three dozen of the best trout streams in the Snake River watershed. Trout Streams of the Tetons is a sure catch. Available from Amazon or my website, coppersmithstudios.com.